I come to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, friends. So the good news is, well, the bad news is that the nursery is closed. The good news is that makes the sermon a little faster or, you know, the, these, these little young guns will, will come, come after me. So, um, uh, so we are in this, this third week of continuing this, this season of spiritual formation. The, the theme of our season right now is... Yes, joy. And, and not just joy, but that we are designed. Yeah, we're designed for joy. And so the first week when we started this, Reverend Patsy just talked about this idea, the audacity to think that we are designed for joy. And to think about the, the chaos in the world right now and the chaos in your life right now. And how are you going to find the eye of the storm so the craziness is going around you? Joy is getting in the eye. And know that you find peace right here, no matter the diagnosis, no matter your bank account number, no matter the relationship status, no matter what someone criticized you and said some horrible things about you, that you're going to find some peace in the midst of it. And so then the second week, we talked about the difference between joy and happiness. And if you remember, happiness is which direction? That's dependent out here. Happiness is dependent upon external circumstances. Your team wins, your team loses. You had a glass of wine, you didn't have a glass of wine. Someone complimented you, someone insulted you. You are dependent upon, you are reacting to external circumstances. Joy is responding to the truth of God's love inside you. And so this week, and, 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 and then this last week, uh, I, I gave you a silly little acronym that I hope worked because it's so silly uh, but do you guys remember that the, the acronym tipsy oh wow good you weren't sleeping okay so tipsy so let's just work through this again because it helps us to be able to develop what we're doing these next three months we're coming to the gym this is our spiritual gym and, and we're disciples discipline you got to do the work grace is free the gym membership is free but you still got to go to the gym Jesus died and saved you from your sin. You still got to go to church. You still got to go to Bible study. You still got to do your prayers. Or it just sits there and you kind of just gain extra flab. You know, your soul gets dirty. You got to get in and work out. So T, what did T stand for? Trust. Wow, that's great. I didn't expect that to happen so quickly. Okay, trust, yeah. So you, and, and who do you got to trust? God! <laughs> Great. <laughs> Gotta trust God. That's what Jesus is talking about. That is what Moses is talking about in Deuteronomy today. Can we bring up that Deuteronomy passage? Mr. Kaz Million with Michael Schneider, our great AV team. God bless you all. Um, this first verse, remember, this is Moses standing on the precipice. He's looking at Cana, the promised land, what they've been waiting for, what God has given the Israelites. And he's saying, okay, so... Y'all, I can't go to the promised land with you. That's where all the joy is at. But see, you have this prosperity set before you, but you have a choice of death and adversity or life and prosperity. There's a choice here, and if you trust God, you're going to be able to go in the direction. If you trust his commandments, do you trust God's commandments in your life? That's the biggest piece. Do you trust those Ten Commandments? Okay, so why are you working on your Sabbath? <laughs> right? I had a priest check me on that one time. I like, I can't come on Sundays. You know, that's, what, that's when they book me, you know, at, at blah, blah, blah. He's like, okay, well, maybe that's part of your spiritual formation. Can you get to a place that you trust God enough that you can say to your employer, I can't, that's my Sabbath. So that's where we get. So that, that, that's one of the Ten Commandments. If you're working seven days a week, this is not a guilt storm. This is something to think about. In your spirit, we're formation. We're disciples. We're under construction. Do you believe and trust in these Ten Commandments? Because Moses is saying, that's where life is. The grass is greener. But if you don't go with the law and you try to create it on your own, good luck, because that's death. It will feel good at first, and joy, but joy does not come in the morning. Okay? The hangover is real. So then, after T, we have I. What is I? It's internal. The external stuff. It, when you feel good for a little bit, it goes away. Someone gives you a compliment. Okay, cool. Yeah, I feel great. Oh, I got a million likes on, on Instagram. Oh, that was so fun. Okay. And then the next time, they're going to give you no likes, and you're going to feel like junk, right? Your internal life doesn't need that because you're validated 
by the one and true God who created you and loves you more than anything in the world and would do anything for your salvation. Then we have P. If we do all that, what starts to come into our life? Peace. Peace. You, when the storm hits and you get something that's going to try to pull you away from the love of God, when someone starts to criticize you, I say, say really? Oh, is, is, that, is that the dress you were going to wear to church? Okay. So you can react, maybe get a little angry, want to say something back. You're in a group where people start gossiping, saying, wow, Lon's mustache, am I right? A little weird. All right. You can join in if you want and join that funky circle of mess, but that's not peace. Get to the peace that's inside your heart. This is why people fast. They fast from social media. They fast from food. They fast from alcohol. They fast from just you take you, whatever you need to lean on externally to find that peace and that bread of life inside of you. And then finally, C. Tip C. And what was C? It's a choice. It is a choice. We just, so, so this is a lifestyle. Joy given to you freely, but you got to work the steps. It's like 12-step. Anyone who's a 12-stepper, it works if you work it. Our faith grows. It's a muscle. We got to do and go to the gym. If you're just a Sunday shopper, good luck with that. If Sunday is a day of your faith, not enough. You're auditing the class. You have not taken the class. You don't have skin in the game. And that's what Jesus is telling us today in the gospel. He's got all these people following him. They talked about all these folks, Samuel. There's just people from all over the place following Jesus. He's a rock star now. It's Luke 14, though. And we're getting late in the gospel. So what's about to happen with Jesus? He's about to enter what big city? Jerusalem. And what's going to happen in Jerusalem? He's going to get crucified. He's going to go to the cross. Sorry, that seemed like I was pandering to you. We were, we're colleagues. We work together. Um, and, and so the, he's about to get killed, and he's about to introduce... What is real discipleship? Are you ready to give up what you need to give up in life to really follow Jesus? Are you willing to be persecuted? Are you willing to carry the cross? Are you willing to give up your time, your money, your energy for God? And that's why Jesus says, if you're not, if you're not ready to turn away and to put me first, if you're not willing to put me first before your own children, before your own spouse, yes, before your own little beautiful Samuel and Sebastian, if you don't place me first, forget it. Discipleship, you're auditing the class. You're sitting in the back saying, this is cute little teachings. Oh, how did the sermon affect me? Oh, that made me feel good. And then you're back at it Tuesday, just kind of slipping back in your normal routines. Jesus doesn't want you to audit the class. If you pick up the cross, this is a lifestyle. You choose. You're going to choose this. And so when we don't choose, see, the, 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 the NRSV is a little stronger on this. Jesus says, whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself, hate. So side note, this is where we as Christians, it's, it's just good to do a little study around the language. Because remember, Jesus is a Jew, not a Christian. Born a Jew, died a Jew. The Jewish culture, the Jewish language, the Jewish way of looking at Scripture, there's a lot of play. There's a lot, it's like jazz. There's eight definitions sometimes for each word. And that word hate, when we get to the Greek, and you look at, also you're hearing it originally, Jesus speaking Aramaic, you, you, you got a lot of play there. And what Jesus is doing is just playing with the opposites here. Are you willing to pull away completely and allow something else to be first, which is me, so either Jesus is a crazy cult leader or he's really the son of God and saying, place me first. If you do that, your love for your mother, your wife, your kids will be golden. But if you place them first, if you marry them first, it's like in a marriage. If you marry the children, your marriage is going to fall apart. If you marry your job, your marriage is going to fall apart. Your marriage must be first. Your marriage with Jesus Christ must be the same. It must be first. Then you won't see the prosperity of what is waiting for you. You're just attending the meeting, but not jumping fully in to see how sobriety looks, if you look at it from a 12-step standpoint. So how do we do this, friends, this choice? Well, uh, in chapter 2, which I all know that you guys read and took notes in your life groups and got together with your neighbors and said, hey, we got this great book, The 4 Eight Principle. Come on over. Let's talk about it. Um, if you haven't, well, I know a lot of you have it. We sold out, which is great. We ordered 50 more. They're coming. Um, and you can always just buy it online. I'm super cheap. Just ask my wife. I buy the used copies from some dude in Kansas, and it's like 99 cents. He's got notes all over it. Um, but 
So Tommy Newberry says, what does it look like when we put God second, third, or fourth? Well, we don't choose to respond to life. We just react to the defeating and negative thoughts that come in our head. When you start to worship other gods, the God of despair, the God of anxiety, the God of loss, let's, let's, he gives us some examples. Do you remember this? The, the 40 junk-producing thoughts. Can you relate to any of these thoughts that come through your head during the day? Number one, I'm never going to be that happy again. Number two, that's just the way it is. Number three, uh, this probably won't work. Don't worry, I'm not going to read all four of you. I'm just going to do time. Number four, if I had money, I'd just worry about losing it. Number five, I don't have what it takes. Number six, that always happens. Number seven, the honeymoon is officially over. <laughs> Here's a good one. Number eight, you ever guilty of this one? I hate myself. How does that feel when you say that? You know, wh wh where's God in that statement? Number nine, he doesn't love me anymore. Number 10, I am not worthy. You say these words, when you, these thoughts will just come in naturally. They'll just come there. It's so much easier for our brain to just latch onto that because it's, just, it's more of a surrender. It's more of a give up. To push back, and on the next page, Tommy Newberry will give you 40 statements that counter that. And what kind of energy does that bring to you? It enters you into the divine mind, not the earthly mind. That's what we want to do. We're learning to think like God. You were designed for joy, and you're made in his image, but it takes work. Just because you've been baptized and confirmed doesn't mean everything just opens up. This is a daily thing. You're a disciple. And why do we do this? The grass is greener. When I get my butt out of bed and I go downstairs and I find that place to pray and I can feel these thoughts already coming in my head, just naturally there, but I take the time to pray and listen to God and read his word, it changes my lens for the whole day. It's no joke, because I know what it's like when I don't do that. <laughs> you think I'm nutty now? Imagine me without prayer and without Jesus. Right? So the Book of Common Prayer, this great tool that we have, has, has three sets of prayers. You have morning prayer, noonday prayer, evening prayer. We don't do that just, just to be obedient slaves. It, it, is a, it is sustenance. So in the morning, you get your mind right with God. You see all the opportunity. You're, going to, you're thinking of that meeting already that's giving you anxiety or that coffee you're going to have with that person who just talks their head off the whole time, who's just so self-involved, and all they do is talk about other people, and they gossip, 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 and then you're like, gosh, I don't want to do this. I'm just going to go and do it and get out of there. Look at that energy. Where's God in that energy? God, I don't really want to go have coffee with this person, but i got to go do it. I don't really want to have this meeting. This woman drives me nuts. This guy drives me nuts. What do I do? God, help me to see this as you see this. Help me to find the importance of this. Where are you in the midst of this Holy Spirit? And you will uncover a new lens. You will find worth and value and growth in that for everything that comes your way. From everything from bankruptcy to a diagnosis, you've got to bring God in the midst of it. You don't have to ignore the ugliness. You don't have to ignore it. The storm is always going to be there. We know life is chaotic. We're looking for the eye of the storm to find God in the midst of it. And what we can control of these thoughts that try to derail you and pull you away from God's unconditional love for you. Design for joy is trying to say the joy is already within you. God created you. He's not an imperfect God. He's a perfect God. You were made in his image. That's Genesis 1. Our duty is to help get out of the way and clear all the junk that tries to pull us from that truth. To create more peace. To develop and find this love that just pours through you. It's this light that just shines through you. And the more and more that we can just be aware of the times when we just get derailed, we get fallen into gossip, we get fallen into self-criticism, or we're criticizing others. We're doing too much self-medication. We're just relying too much on what others think of us. And to be validated out there, you're being pulled away from the true source that's inside of you, that you don't need validation. You've already been validated. You've already been saved. God doesn't like you. He loves you. I mean, he likes you, but he loves you, and he will die for you. And to receive that love and say, God, you, you love me like, like I'm the last thing in the whole world. You, you love me so much. And help me to accept that love. Help it that go over my wounds, go over my darkness, 
and help me to just be just joyful in that love, God. I need your help. It just doesn't happen overnight. So this week, look over chapter 2. Look over those statements. Which ones do you identify with? And write in the margin the opposing thought. How does that feel inside of you? How does that resonate inside of you? How does that energy change? And examine your prayer life. Are you starting your day with God? Are you ending your day with God? Because I'll tell you, you'll sleep better. You will sleep better if you end with prayer. Thank you, God, for today. Help me to be at peace. Thank you for my family. Thank you for these walls. Thank you that I have a sink that I can get clean drinking water from. Just thank you, Jesus. And I pray for this day to end for me to get some peace and go to sleep. These are our disciplines. We're people of spiritual formation. Work it, work it, work it. It's been given to you freely. Now cultivate it and grow into this unconditional source of love that's inside of us. God's love. Amen.